I'm back with part two of our holiday vlog where we went to Bristol for a day after we went sailing from Portland to Dartmouth. Bristol was on our way back to Nottingham from Dartmouth so we thought we'd stop by for some sightseeing since we've never been before. It's a bit of a budget sightseeing trip because we picked up places that were free to visit. Our first stop was Temple Church which is a church ruin that Temple Meads train station was originally named after. There was some construction work going on, so the view wasn't the best. It has a pretty surrounding garden tucked away in the middle of the city. The other end of the ruins was a little quieter and prettier to look at without all the construction works in the way. You can't actually go inside the ruins, or at least not that I could see, so we could only look in through the huge windows. We strolled over to St Philip's Bridge to get to St Peter's Church. There were heart shapes marked onto the grass for some reason, and people were sitting in these hearts, possibly a social distancing thing. Just like Temple Church, St Peter's Church is a ruin as well that you can't go into. I do like how Bristol has these beautiful ruins in the middle of the city. Usually I only ever see church ruins in the outskirts somewhere. We then went to St Nicholas Market where they had food stores and other independent stores. Some highlights included an old fashioned sweet shop, a record store and bookshops. They also had an indoor market area with even more shops. My favourite was this shop called Japonicat, where they sell cutesy Japanese goodies. I always have to stop and look inside if I see a shop selling plushies. We went back to the food stalls to grab a late lunch. Sadly it was past 3pm so most of the stalls had sold out or closed for the day, leaving us with very little choice. We ended up getting a wrap from Matina, which was pretty decent. I've not had authentic Middle Eastern food before, but this seemed more authentic than a lot of wraps I've had in the past. We passed through the Christmas steps to get to our next destination. According to Google, it's called the Christmas Steps because it's next to Christmas Street. But there's no explanation as to why Christmas Street is called Christmas Street. Either way, the steps are quaint and charming. I can imagine the alley looking quite magical and Christmassy if it snows. We arrived at the shop I've been eyeing. At Kimono Kimono, they sell vintage, traditional Japanese clothes. Obviously this stop doesn't really fall under our budget itinerary, but the prices are pretty good since they're second hand. They had all these beautiful kimono hairpins and fans on display. 
I came to buy an obi for a secondhand kimono I ordered off Depop. The store owner was very knowledgeable and helped me pick an obi to suit my kimono. Our final stop in our brief Bristol trip was Mrs. Potts Chocolate House, which I've been eyeing ever since I saw our foodie friends visit Bristol and post a photo of their insane cakes. We got a slice of the chocolate dream cake, which is a four layered chocolate cake with a dark chocolate ganache filling and white chocolate buttercream icing, and is thoroughly drizzled with three types of chocolate sauce. The cake was deliciously moist and indulgent, and goes incredibly well with a cup of tea. With the literally sweet end to our brief day trip in Bristol, we looked forward to our next stop, Bath.